Hi friends, it's Cassandra from the blog becomingafarmgirl.com and today I wanted to share some of my recent antique and thrift store finds that farm girls in the making will likely enjoy. The majority of the time when I leave my house, it's because I'm going to the farmer's market to get plants or produce to can or I'm thrifty. And the majority of the items in my house are secondhand. I just love how thrifting allows me to punch above my pay grade and get items that are uh, quality and unique and pale in comparison to anything that you're going to find in a commercial store. I've got about 10 things I want to share, so let's jump in. I am so excited to share this with you because this is one of my top three antique finds. Are you ready? First, let me give you a quick story. So like most folks, I enjoy a really good cup of coffee in the morning. And the way that my husband and I prepare ours is with a French press. Now, the way that you have to prepare your beans for French press coffee is with a coarse grind. So I was just putting my beans into this electric blender that we had and giving it a few pulses. But about two years ago, that broke and I didn't replace it. Well, I replaced it with the Ninja, but then I was so scared to use like the grinder for the beans. So I started substituting fully ground coffee in the French press and it totally works, but I really wanted to start going back to whole bean coffee, not only for the freshness and how long it keeps, but also for the different varieties that you can get. So I really gave some thought around transitioning to a manual coffee grinder, and I went online to do some research. And that's when I came across the Arcade Cast Iron Coffee Grinders. They are gorgeous, functional, and won't take up counter space in my townhouse kitchen. These manual home grinders were founded by the Arcade Manufacturing Company in 1885 in the town of Freeport, Illinois. The company made coffee grinders from their inception until the 1930s. There are four models. The number one and the number two are the hardest grinder to find, but the number three grinder, which is what I found, made this company famous for its coffee grinders. These are very popular from 1910 to about 1920. Now I thought I was just gonna be excited to find this, but take a look at my dad's reaction. All right, dad. So do you remember this? Yeah. And what is it? Coffee grinder. That's right, and I've had it now for a couple of months. So what was it missing? The top where you can put it in and grind it all up. Exactly, and you know that these things are over 100 years old, right? Yeah, easy. yeah. this is easy. Yeah, way before these contraptions we got and stuff today, you can just tell how heavy this thing is. Oh, for sure, and it's in excellent condition. Well, Dad, guess what? I found this on Facebook Marketplace. You know that, my like okay. favorite find. Dad, I have been looking all over for the actual arcade glass and they've been crazy expensive. I mean like $200. Dad, what? guess what I found? Let me show you. Dad, look what I wow. found. Yeah, I just found this like a week and a half ago. Now you can see already this is just a different model. I love the condition and style of this one. It's still wow. arcade, but this has the original glass top, Dad. So what I'm gonna need you to do is like unscrew this, take this off, and then put it inside of here, and then can you hang it for me on the wall? Sure. Isn't that crazy, Dad? So how old do you think this one here? I mean, this one here actually looks like it may be older than this one. Oh yeah, for sure. The woman says she at least knows, like it's been in her family for at least two generations. Like she got it from her grandmother. I know, I know. Yeah. This yeah. is the type of stuff here that with what you're doing and everything makes your kitchen look very, very authentic. For sure. And stuff, and this is the type of stuff that you need to have and stuff. This is yeah. This is good stuff. This is country stuff. <laughs> I'm so glad you're excited okay. about the find. Uh, yeah, I just, I can. Oh, and definitely. This, and Dad, this was only like a 10 minute trip from the house. I couldn't uh, believe it. I know. Okay. Yeah. Get my tools right. and I get started. All right. Thanks, Dad. Good stuff. That's the way it looks right there. See. Just now I was so 
looking forward to that first cup of coffee with my dad. But you know what happened? It was horrible. Yeah, because one of the things I forgot that I had done is uh, when I was trying to get like the gears to move, they were really, really tough. And so I had actually slid a little bit of, I think like olive oil or some type of oil down there. And then things start, started to grind. But oh, I kind of forgot that. So we got all of that taste in that first cup, which we did not even finish. And I actually had to just grind an entire bag of beans all the way through just to get that taste out. But now, mornings are bliss. <laughs> So the deal I got on this next purchase, I'm just shocked. Now I feature my kitchen quite frequently in my canning videos, so if you're a returning friend, you may have already picked up on this. It's that. I found a professional grade kitchen aid mixer that retails for at least $430 and up for $85. Bucks. But I kind of have mixed feelings about this purchase, so let me share. A very important goal that I have in my kitchen is that things are functional and that I only have pieces that I'm using the majority of the time. I also have an aversion to things that aren't going to be around for the long haul, which is why I like cooking equipment like cast iron. Now, I also do a fair amount of from scratch cooking, so of course I had heard of a KitchenAid, but oh my goodness, sticker shock. I mean, there is no way that I would ever pay that price for something that I have developed what I believe to be satisfactory workarounds. And plus, it's really just my husband and I, my parents come over a lot to eat or guests or company, but those are manageable kind of large loads of food. Um, and so I feel that my kitchen generally is complete. Well, at least I felt that way until this summer because I was able to can the most that I ever have this year. And I forget exactly what I was processing, but for the first time, the thought popped into my mind, man, it would be great if you had a stand mixer and you could double your efforts, meaning that I could keep doing what I was doing, but have another piece of equipment that was helping me along. But I quickly pushed that out of my mind because of price. Now it did come with a set of attachments, but I also want to get the, uh, the pasta maker attachment, the juicer, and the meat grinder, which again, I see people selling those attachments all the time, usually for around like 10 to 20 dollars and there's always negotiating uh, on Facebook marketplace so if I could get a KitchenAid mixer with all of these attachments for under you know 175 dollars that really is a win this KitchenAid mixer is in mint condition and it was from an older woman that was just downsizing and wanted to get rid of it quick and fast now at the moment I am still defaulting and cooking in the way that I know how to I will have some time off right before Thanksgiving where I'll be able to go through and really take my time and learn how to use this uh, machinery but I am really excited to have this mixer because I am someone that does prepare things in bulk and so if this mixer works out for me um, I'm really excited that I didn't have to make the full financial commitment and the fact is is that KitchenAid mixers are known as the Toyotas of the kitchen um, and so I'm really hoping that I get some mileage and utility out of this mixer. Next up we have books. I love books. I grew up in a home full of books and my current house is pretty much the same way. They're seriously everywhere in my house. They're in baskets and on shelves and hanging on walls and under benches. Books are just everywhere. More recently my husband and I are looking to purchase either the original original or earlier versions of books by our favorite authors. Now with that being said, we are not trying to become antique book collectors because that can actually become very expensive. When we spent some time in the UK, one of the outings that we enjoyed the most was visiting bookstores. And what I love about the bookstores in the UK is that they are troves of antique and old books in a way that you just don't find here in the US unless you are at an independently owned bookshop. And tragically, those are getting harder and harder to find nowadays. I am a Charles Dickens fan, and my husband came across this entire 16 set household edition, which admittedly, some of the binding is in poor shape, but the pages are in good condition, and they are purely for our enjoyment. I love the feel 
feel of the pages, the font, the old book smell, and the original cross-hatching illustrations. We also found several pocket classic books by authors Victor Hugo, John Keats, and Jane Austen. I love Jane Austen. I will take any evening where I have the time to watch a Jane Austen miniseries, curled up on the couch with a blanket, a cup of tea, and the soft light of an oil lamp. Oh, yes please. Speaking of Jane Austen and tea, take a look at this next find. Not only do I simply enjoy the almost endless taste varieties of tea and its accompanying health benefits, I'm also drawn to the visual and auditory ambience created by a tea room, especially ones that harken back to the Victorian era or remind me of visits I've made to tea rooms. I shared a low prep weekday tea routine here on the channel, but I also enjoy having a tea set when we're hosting or one of my friends stop by. As such, it almost becomes inevitable that you'll find yourself seeing the utility in a tea set. My husband actually purchased this mint and bone china tea set for me at a UK antique fair. I love this Marlowe print which features romantic flowers against the backdrop of a wreath. I have loved giving this tea set a home in my curio. And that's the thing about vintage pieces. They're often too striking or well made to keep hidden behind a cupboard. While I still enjoy an oversized mug of tea, having an authentic English tea set from the 1930s continued to be used nearly 100 years later has the nostalgia I love about pieces that I purchased and decide to bring into my home because they create an energy and atmosphere of slower living, artistry, and enjoyment. There is something about having quality tools and these are Oh, they're just lovely. Now, due to the size of our current property, I am mostly a vertical gardener, but I could not pass up these essential hand tools to one day hang from my outdoor potting bench. Plus, you just can't get gardening tools of this level of quality easily. They've already got that time-worn charm and the wood just feels so solid and luxurious in my hand. So I got this dibbler, which is used to poke holes in your soil and determine your uh, seed depth for putting your seeds in the ground. I also grabbed this garden hoe or weeder and this flat edge tool. So here on the channel and over on my blog, becomingafarmgirl.com, I share quick and versatile canning recipes that you can make right at home. Since discovering canning a few years ago, I have just fallen in love. Not only is it the best way to meal prep, but we're also eating more healthy and delicious than ever before. One of the essential tools that you've gotta have is a jar lifter. But you know, I feel like there's a monopoly out on the market with these things because all I've been able to find online or in stores are these jar lifters that have the plastic grips or these pricier ones by ball that are around $15. But you know what? I'm not head over heels over either one of these because they're both hard to use. So here's what the issue is. The cheaper one has an excellent jar grip, but these handles inevitably crack on you. This is either my third or fourth one. They're maybe not more than like three or four bucks, but these handles, they crack and I store them well. I don't know what the issue is. When I was also reading reviews um, online, lots of folks have the same problem. And so then it becomes completely uncomfortable. Actually, here's the set. Here it is. Yeah, so this is what they inevitably end up looking like, which is so frustrating because I mean, you definitely don't want to pick up a jar like this or, you know, finagle something around it so that it works. Um, so yeah, these things always crack on you. So then I thought, okay, let me just go ahead and upgrade to this uh, type. And I don't like this one either because yes, these grips for sure, they feel luxurious, but it's the actual like jar grip around here. Now I've never actually broken a jar, but it doesn't, it doesn't, hold the jar like as quickly and securely as these do. So I really just have to like take my time to make sure and slowly move my jars. Uh, but yeah, the actual like grip on this, I don't like it. Which is why when I happened across this vintage jar lifter, I was like, <gasps> I was so excited. I am so excited to have this because it's the perfect piece. You can tell how well built it is, right? It's not bonded anywhere. It is just one solid piece of wood. And you also have the solid grip component piece that I like actually from these cheaper ones. And so, I mean, there's a little or a few signs of wear here and there, 
I do not mind, but I am so excited that I have this jar lifter. Next up is this honey pot. We use a good amount of honey around here for breakfast, baking, drizzling on top of oatmeal, and of course, in tea. A honey pot and dipper is decorative, drips less than a spoon, and is a practical story method. I found this pottery jar and immediately knew I could not let another season go by, especially since cooler weather is here without a honey pot. <laughs> About five years ago, we made the switch to exclusively using cloth napkins from Disposable, and we absolutely love it. You save money by eliminating the reoccurring expense of disposable napkins, along with the space they take up if you stock up a bit like I did. Cloth napkins are so satisfying to use because they do a better job of keeping your hands clean, your table beautiful, and your cleanup quick. I just love how they elevate meals with very minimal effort. I keep two separate stashes. The first is in a kitchen drawer, and those are the ones my husband and I use several times before they're washed. And the second set are kept in my buffet drawer, and they're for company and wash just after one use. I've thrifted all of my cloth and linen napkins for just a few bucks. The latest set caught my eye because they're made out of linen, which is a fabric that I love. And they're hand embroidered, and I just love that someone put care and attention into these. Now, I've never gone with a napkin color this light because we eat real food around here, but I could not resist these and I needed a few more napkins. To get more tips on how to say yes to your farm dream in a small space in a spare time, join me here weekly. I'll see you in my kitchen or garden soon.